course, holding the trophy is, is the number one thing for us. Uh, that's what we aim for at every tournament, and uh, especially at this one, because we didn't win the last one. I think our team is really confident at the moment. Our practice has been going pretty well up to this event, and we are pretty comfortable in the way we are playing right now. And then now we just want the Australian fans to cheer for us, and um, then we will make them proud. We are feeling confident uh, at our online games lately and going into tournaments, we won the last tournament, so we feel pretty comfortable. I think it's always interesting with playing Astralis. There's always big storylines. Last two tournaments with Nico, we played them in the final. This time we're playing them in the semi-final, which is going to be interesting as well. And I think we just have that what Astralis don't have right now. I think their weakness is that they can be pretty easy to read. If they doesn't have the best game individually, we can uh, beat them quite easily, I think. We have to focus a lot about our own game. Every time we play good and we find solutions for how our opponents is doing, that is when we really shine. I know how they play, they know how we play, and I think it comes down to who is setting their shots and who is the most unpredictable team. We are able to beat them because we are the best team in the world. We are the most skilled team in the world right now, and that's why we are going to make it to the Grand Finals. All right then, I am Sydney. It is time for the second part of our double A-side, the second semi-final here at the Kudos Bank Arena. Are you ready for this? I'm not just saying this to you, I'm not just flirting with you, but you are one of the best crowds we have ever had. I love you. The only thing I loved more was that guy's beard over there earlier on. It was fabulous. Did you see it? The size of it? Yeah, it's like the Great Barrier Reef. You could see it from space. And there was a rich ecosystem living in it of plants and animals. But let's get it on. So second semi-final, heading towards playing for this and the final tomorrow. Best of five tomorrow, but this is a best of three. And the two teams are the two teams that I've enjoyed playing together most over the past few months, because it's not just about winning. It's about bragging rights. It's gone one way. It's about personal storylines at the moment. It's sat with FaZe after they won earlier this year. So let's get this second semi-final on. Let's get this semi-final on down here at IDEM Sydney. So please, welcome to the stage your two teams. They are Astralis and FaZe. So it has been fabulous matchups. I'm just going to get a quick word with Carrigan. Now, I've chatted to you a lot over the past few months at different times. You're in this team now. You guys are not just playing well, you're playing for each other. Is there still a little bit of something personal when you play Astralis? Yeah, and you're going to see that now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this man was hyping it at IAM in Katowice. There is still something. Now, I said before, it's a little bit personal. There's bragging rights. They beat you last time you played. How much do you want to set that right? 110%. All right, they've set it up. So 110%, we're about to see it there. Sydney, are you ready? Yeah. I said, are you ready? Let's get the second Simon final on. It is FaZe taking on Astralis. FaZe Clan, that ragtag bunch of Mavericks from all over Europe, the fastest guns in the West, of course, put together for one cause, and that's CS Glory to take on the Great Danes, maybe even the greatest Danes in CS Australis. This should be, in any other tournament, a grand final matchup. We're blessed to have it early, gentlemen. This is going to be intense. 
think OJ highlighted the one thing that we didn't, the fact that this is a grudge match, and you can't forget that. Carrigan versus his old teammates. You know, his old teammates want to prove that they're better than him, and they don't need him. And on the stage again, this is the, the third. This is the, the, the third time in su such a short period of time that we're going to see these teams go up against it. And uh, I'm excited, that's for sure. I mean, it's basically the third land tournament in a row that these two teams meet. Two times it was in the grand final, this time it's in the semi-final. And it's going to be very interesting to see how this first map goes. Because you look at, you know, Kerrigan, it's not just like bragging just for the sake of it. He actually believes that they are the better cobblestone, cobblestone team despite losing 16-7. to 7. So they're definitely going to try and prove that on the server. Do you think that hurt Kerrigan though? Do you think it hurts a little bit when he tries to come up with his ace up the sleeve, this cobblestone match, and he got completely outsmarted by his old team. I actually think he loved it. I think he loved the fact that they lost 16 to 7 because that gives obviously a lot of confidence to Astralis and FaZe believes that they're a much better team than that. So that kind of happened in the group stages. Doesn't really matter. Now in the actual semi-final, this is where we kind of lured them into the trap. Yeah, trap card indeed. That's exactly where I was going with that one right there. But I think, you know, you're just going to need those individual performances. They said it comes down to the, who's going to hit their shots. We know that Astralis has the better structure, but at the same time, FaZe, they have that firepower. If they can fire up right here, get some early uh, frags on the board, they can run away with a pretty good lead on Cobble, I think. It has to be. It has to start there, of course, in that pistol round. And you can see the crowd bated breath awaiting this particular match to come through and as well the coaches let's not forget their role in all of this zonic and roban going back so many years talking about iem they had their fair share of rivalries at, at this tournament back in 1.6 zonic playing for mtw the astralis of the time and roban was actually on, on sk sk fielded a, a full swedish lineup so there's even a rivalry there of course now on screen is device number one player in the world right now some would say you still think so? Do you think he's definitely held that title up throughout the qualifiers for this tournament? Consistency-wise, you would have to say yes. You just He's a, he's the quiet achiever in the sense of he's always putting up positive ratios, and then you see him go huge, getting the multi-kills to win rounds, just being so fantastic with pistols, the orb, rifles, he can do it all. And I think, you know, he's going up, there's another one who can do it all. There's Nico right there, the star of FaZe. Having these two clashing time and time again is, is one of the biggest storylines, even though they're not always the ones bringing out the, the frags, it is definitely one that we run with. And Kiyoshima, though, has been said that he was a little bit quiet in some of the tougher games for FaZe Clan here. I mean, what's his role here? He is very much that role player, that supporter in he's this an team. He's an incremental part of this team because on a lot of the maps, he plays the tough positions where sometimes he's left to his own devices and he's expected to do a lot, like pit on Inferno, like upper bomb side on Nuke, uh, like playing on train in that B bomb site. Also on the T side, he's really there to help his teammates. He's, he's there to perform in the clutch round. So we saw in Kiev, he was actually probably the swing player for phase well it's time to put pen to paper in the latest chapter in the greatest rival in counter-strike and your casters to take us through it's going to be pansy and moses thank you mitch and the desk it is time to start off this truly phenomenal grand semi-final here between these two Revenge is on the tip of Astralis' tongue just after that Kiev matchup, and FaZe want to create that dynasty beginning here now. We're on the way, it's FaZe on the T side, and they're going straight to work. Yeah, this is really fast paced. They want to set the tone right at the start. Rain with one. Glaive's got to hold on, and he's hitting some very nice shots, staying alive as long as possible into this three on three. And now they have control of the bomb site. We've still got the swing factor of Nico coming late in through drop. I think Kiev might have heard the steps. And it slows down. Bomb planted. Device nearly one HP. Kievi still sits pretty, but not for long. Alu is there, and Alu's there again. Four kills for Alu in this round. That's so. For him. Yeah, that is so sick. They need guys like Alu, and they need guys like Kiyoshima to have another stellar series here against Astralis. And th this matchup is so funny on Cobblestone. And the big thing is talking to both of these teams like before before today began. Astralis believes completely that they have phase Trump with this pick of Cobble. They're so excited to, to be playing on Cobble a second time. They, they think they're the better team. They think this was a trap for FaZe. And FaZe, I mean, Kerrigan just came up to the desk in front of us and just, you know, said, yep, they fell right into our trap. We get to play Cobblestone again. And look at this, another rush towards this B bomb site. FaZe not slowing down whatsoever. Glaive's going to slow things down for now. They're going to do it for him. Actually, everyone's alive. This is now really dicey for FaZe. They're stuck. Yeah, look at the HP. Rain's pretty low. Now, Glaive can't hold up against the UMPs. They're breaking through. Now, Kievi, Dupree, and Device. They got to dig deep trying to keep this one together because FaZe, they want to take all of this. Device finds Kyo, and they're slowly trying to push towards site. Nico breaks through by drop again. A bit of a rinse and repeat here from before. It's not Alu this time, it's Nico at the helm. And it's all on Dupree. A 1v3 sits in front of him, and it's not looking too likely with the bomb down. And already two challenges arising. 
That's so sick. This is why they have Nico in the team. This is why he's considered such a huge talent, a massive star. When they get stuck on that platform, it's him who comes in to bail, the, uh, bail them out. Save the day, really. The last player in that rush. And he's the first one who comes down broken while with two quick kills. Gets four completely in the round and ensures that FaZe can continue moving forward. So 2-0. And this time, Astralis has nothing in the round. You've got to wonder how much time FaZe spent pouring over the demos from the group stage, reviewing what went wrong on this very map. Well, that was the thing in the interview. Kerrigan just basically said, yeah, once it got to 12-6 and we were on the T side, I just didn't show anything that we'd prepared. He, he said, I just kind of let us lose at that point because it is the group stage. Confident that we're still going to make the playoffs. Why show anything to this team that we might very well want to play on this map again later on in the tournament? And I mean, this is where we get to see what they actually have. This is where they have to show us what they've prepared. Kerrigan, a risky in-game leader, but it might work out here. Blade, big deny. Alu, that's a bit awkward, turns around, side swipes down Glaive, an easy one in the end, it made it look a little trickier than I thought, but no. FaZe keeping it clean for the first three, and Astralis not yet to re up the fight, but this is the round where it all begins. This is what's so funny, is you can, you can theorize on what FaZe has prepared, what, you know, how they're going to change things, or like what they could do against Astralis, and basically these first three rounds have just been rushes towards the B-bomb site. They just want to get in, they want to get into the action, and it's working so far. Kiyoshima's going to keep the MAC-10, Alu's going to keep the UMP, so he's the offer. And I mean, this, this, that just lends to you to believe that it's going to be a little bit more fast-paced again when you have these two SMGs, keep them moving. It's going to be light utility for the Astralis side, so there'll be plenty of opportunities to be aggressive. It's Kiyo being first man in at the point. Rain, Alu behind, and he is going straight through, but it's Glaive! Not that much stopping power, it's the MAC-10 to take him down, that's a bit of a tragedy! As Astralis now have to try and recover, and they are in a 4v4, but against a T-side with the same number of players, it's still pretty darn tricky. Running down the counter utility from Astralis as well. There's only one flashbang left on a pre Molotovs around. Still smokes in the hands of FaZe. They're waiting patiently, trying to figure out where everything is. They know Zipnix is in the site. Kirby around the rock. He's trying to find something, and it's going to be Zipnix who's not brought down. Kirby bails him out, and a second kill. That's from Zipnix. That's a huge play. This defense holds strong. They finally held off. Faze trying to hit in towards the site, but there's still Nico and there's still damage. That's one. He's got 79 HP. There's a shot in this. I would never write this man out. Bomb not too far either. Zipnix on 2 HP. What will he do now? Important thing right now at the moment for Nico is kills. Get at least one to two more kills. Keep the economy low. Force a lot of rebuys. Force the drops. And you can see with all the time, he's just being patient. Wants to see if anyone from Astralis is going to make a mistake. They might consider rotations, they might consider drop, they just add that little seed of doubt. It might be enough, Nico gonna spot an arm there. Not enough to get the kill. Dupree backs away, but now the alarm bells start ringing. Nico, every step he takes, gets more dangerous! It's a 1v2! But would you predict it? Oh, Dupree denies it, smart play, but a risky one in the end. He does recover the AWP and keeps things stable for Astralis. Yeah, smart and risky is exactly that from Dupree. The repositioning behind the rock where Device had just fallen. He exposes himself out in the open if Nico had kept swinging wide, but obviously Nico's never going to expect a second player to be there, and a great shot from Dupree. Not as damaging as it could have been. Remember, Zipnix was low as well on the site, so if Dupree falls there, that, that feels like Nico's just going to win that one. All right, back and we go. FaZe, of course, kept those MAC-10s. They kept the money. Pretty robust throughout this one so far. They've still got a good buy here. Alu as well with the AWP. A nice addition, but Kyo, he's going running. What the hell? How did he make it up that far? Glaive just find him, and he's not going to move either. Glaive wants to keep this all for himself, but Kyo is there in support, but gets overwhelmed by Nico coming through drop, and it's down to this 2v2, but we do have the AWP on device trying to play back into this. But Nico wants to turn things around for himself. It's again, yeah, it's going to be slowed down one more time. The bomb set is lost, but actually Alu's very, very slow, and actually moving into it, knowing the AWP is more than likely going to be peeking through those double doors. It's all down to Nico to cover him, but a flank is coming in as well. That's going to be the tough part for Nico. It's all going to be down to timing, and I think it's in Dupree's side. Oh, just barely not, but now he has the knowledge. Alu's getting the plant down. And where does Nico position himself from here? He's got to be so careful. These after plant positions are paramount. <laughs> Nico, if only you knew, but... Timing of that nade, disguise the drop. They don't know Dupree is down there, but it doesn't matter. It seems that Alu already finding one. Dupree now gives away the position. There's no 1v2, and it might be time to back away. Try and get the AWP and run, Dupree, run! Nico's not going to let you. It's FaZe striking straight back here. Blow for blow so far in the gun rounds, at least, and that is going to push Astralis back to the Stone Age. And the timing was not with Dupree. He got the information, but Nico never came back to face, and this is now... This is a scary Nico as well. A couple of rounds now, you can feel he's really, really tuned in on this game. He's going to be a force. The hard reset coming in, but Astralis is going to buy right through it.
The Pistols are up KRB with the UMP, but they've got to figure out this B bomb site. They have been pressured over on that side of the map every single round, and they've barely been able to contain it. Yeah, always tough when you, you look at phase on paper, it's always going to be tough. They have so much raw firepower they can throw into these sites. You just kind of expect them to trade favorably, but Carrigan's going straight ahead towards drop. Yeah, me though. Waiting with the UMP. Strikes first. A lot of aggression from the initial players in these attacks from FaZe. A lot of times it's been Kiyoshima jumping off that broken wall. That time Kerrigan just with the MAC-10, just seeing what he can find. Question is, what do they gain from it? There it is. They gain a kill. Glaive is mollied out. That's really, really nice focus from FaZe, making sure they clear every corner as it mixes the next point of danger for the FaZe guys. Yeah, Kyo already finding the flame to drop just kind of removes all the stability from that B-side. Zipnix now out in the open. Still going to find one, but one is not enough here. And Dupree was over by A this entire time with that Deagle and armor. Now it seems a little bit impossible by this point. Well, at the very least, we can say one thing that, that FaZe has prepared for this map is they have the Molotovs down. I mean, they just slowly take control of that B platform. Molotov out the cubby, Glaive gets picked off. Molly out the stairs before you commit to the bomb site, and Zipnix is forced into the open. Even though he gets a kill, it just doesn't matter at that point. It's been a very, very strong T side for FaZe. Six rounds now, they have gone towards this B bomb site. See Nico smiling as well. It, it's scary when FaZe, because the thing is that I know a lot of people who've been, you know, maybe watching FaZe throughout the group stage, they're just having fun. They're just, you know, super lighthearted, always kind of you know, building off each other. And if they're just enjoying themselves and running through Astralis in a semi final, you think, how do you stop someone like Nico going off? How do you stop Alu going off? It's, it's, it almost feels impossible. And we know that Astralis found this hard against SK to, to try and get around that fallen element with that additional orb that came through, but still. They're going to have to come up with a plan soon to try and quell that attack that FaZe have been bringing towards B. And the tough part is, I mean, they've actually done a pretty decent job, all things considered. They really haven't had a round where they've had all the utility that they could possibly like to hold it off, you know, for more than 45 seconds, more than that initial throw of a smoke and Molotov. I mean, they just haven't had the economy to do that, but still they've brought some of those into two-on-twos and in very close clutch situations, they just haven't been able to win them out. And again, it's looking like it's going to be a massive play towards this B bomb site from FaZe. The question becomes that when the gun round comes in, do they just throw more bodies for the defense at the B site, or do they try and get aggressive over towards A, try and get a quick flank coming in? And then it's down to FaZe. Do they switch up that one time? Do they go, all right, screw it, let's go A. It's ball is in their core, cool, but Kierby is doing some real damage through drop at the moment. It may be a one-for-one one at this point, but anything's a benefit. They got himself an AK Glaive, finds Nico. What is happening here? We're down to a 3v2, and Glaive again tries to take the fight, but now Rain is fully switched on and well aware of what's happening here. Kierby is the one guy who can try and deny what FaZe are building here, and is not looking all that good. Alan goes down, no! It's down to the 1v1! No armor on Kierby. Rain on 37 HP, it's all aim, it's all guts, it's all glory. And one minute to play this out. Bomb next to Kierby. Rain knows he has to take this fight, and both players missing. It's vital. Molly goes in, tag off oh, Kierby! He gets the job done. No armor, just sheer raw firepower. What sick composure from Kierby in that round. You can see he doesn't want to commit to any of those fights. He's got no armor. Any of the bullets that come out from Rain is, is really going to mess with his aim in that situation. So he has to find the perfect fight to take. And eventually he does get it. Kierby outlasting Rain there. That's huge. Also, I mean, the big thing is that that's a round where they only had pistols. So a blunder there from FaZe, and that's going to put their economy a little bit low. That's going to put them on the edge. Very, very small uh, tech pause, but it's, we're back into the action now. Oh, I think Astralis might have just followed up with an actual tactical one for themselves. I so. mean, this is smart because this is, this is essentially a, a really big portion of the half because they just win a round. Their economy is, is they have four players below $1,000. So if they lose this one, it's right back into that double reset territory. This is the round that can establish if moving forward, they'll be able to have a decent, decent guns and decent utility. This is the best round they've had in terms of their arsenal. So if you're phased though, do you just throw a curveball at them? You've just been pounding B the whole time. Yeah, that's just switch up and go away. That's the question because they have they have by with so much success at B early on in this match, they've set it up perfectly to throw some kind of a fake, right? Because Astralis, once those nades are coming out from phase towards the B bomb site, they're gonna be very, very worried since they haven't been able to handle it very well for five, six rounds in a row. So the fake at some point is going to come out. The question is, does Kerrigan go with it here? We're gonna see what he calls coming out of this one. Again, Astralis, it looked like they started to do kind of a four one look for a little while, trying to you know, really be able to handle that B presence, but we're back into this now. And this is already a different look. You can see it from the start. Three towards A, two, one, one gets towards drop, and Dupree, device almost there. 
and Astralis actually one step ahead. That's a great peek from Device over that smoke to just see if bodies are going towards the A bomb site. He gets the information, and Astralis already has three players here. This is the battle. This is for the round rain. Just eliminates the free. Goes for more, and he's going to get it. Kirby can't handle it. There's the third player. They all miss. Raid is unstoppable. He might not stop now. Zimnix could be the next possible victim here. He's trying to get round. He's trying to be relevant. But Rain's not having any of it. That's four. He comes alive when it matters the most. And again, Astralis will be left shattered after this round. That is so crushing if you're Astralis. Mentally as well, you have the perfect call. You have the perfect setup. Three players in A-Halls, and it's one man, just Rain, who eliminates all of them. What a round. And it's always been the danger with this phase team. You always question what happens when one of the players turns up, two of the players turn up. We've had three so far. Glaive is trying to find his way out of this, but too many men surround him. And that round meant a lot to FaZe. Yeah, that's huge. Look at this money on the Astralis side of things. That is so brutal for them. It's going to be another round that you have to imagine. And, and just look at this. First headshot, this is the one that really confuses you. That Molotov is perfect. It actually isolates Rain. His only option is to go forward. And to see someone like Device, Sponge said it in the pregame. I mean, just on the fact of how consistent he is at landing shots and how consistent he is among series and among maps, you can consider him the best player in the world. But, it, I mean, that is just a, a routine miss that he makes there. And now, they can go right back towards B. Why not just go right back to what was working before? Nico doesn't even see him. Getting Zipnix down to 17 HP is absolutely devastating now. They hold phase. They've got the utility. They can just wait this out. They can molly out any area they need to. The device is just swing factor as is Kiev. Be patient as well. They know if there's a buy, it's just going to be pistol armor. So running down the clock is a friend of phase here because the more they pressure, the more utility is going to come out for the Astral side of things. So easier to take those ranged duels with AKs against pistols when there's no smokes in the way. And at the moment, they've slowed everything down, considering a rotation back towards the A bomb site. Nico is alone in drop. This is lovely. Pulling four players over to me. And I think Astralis are getting an idea of what's happening here. You can see them slowly swinging back over Zimnix and, and Kierby and Device, all considering Dupree might be hearing steps. He might not be. It might just be a read on the timing here. Yeah, I think this is just a read from Astralis. It's also a gamble, knowing they have to do something. There's Dupree, spots one. Kiyoshima gets into some cover. Gonna take the fight still. If Dupree walks right into it, Zipnix out in the open, he gets dropped. Device, though. This could throw a real problem towards FaZe. Will they expect it? Will they deal with... Ooh, a one-for-one -one trade is good. That's fine. That's more than you're happy with. Now, Kiyobi's left in that kind of decisive moment. Of, what do I do? Oh, my God, Kyo! Right through the door. <laughs> we'll find him anyway. It feels like nothing works in their favor here. Yeah, this is going so well. At the moment, it's looking like FaZe were correct. They were the ones who set the trap for Astralis, and they've fallen right into it. Glaive, the only one left, he's sandwiched. That kill might not matter. Nico's still at the B bombsite, but that's huge. Really great awareness from Glaive, and he's going to get out. He's going to survive with the AK-47. It'll be likely the only weapon they have into the next round, but at least it's something you can work with. The money has been absolutely distraught for Astralis, yet to feel like they can actually make that fight. The, the imperative rounds phase have just seemed to have such an advantage, even in the mental game. They came into it doing those consistent B hits that worked and worked and worked, and then that A hit comes through and it was rain right at the helm of that, and it just worked out so perfectly for them. Yeah, great individual efforts from, from FaZe in all the important rounds, right? All the rounds that Astralis has something, the first chances they get to build and string rounds together, FaZe just shuts them right down. Mm. Well, so far we've seen Alu have his moment, we've seen Rain, and we've seen Nico. Let's see what Keo and Carrigan could do. Why not? They're going to have a lovely time in this round. You've only got Glaive with the rifle. P250 or two as well, spread apart, but not too much to write home about at this point. And Astralis just having to maybe consider options of what they do in the next round here. That's the tough part because, I mean, actually, just the previous round they lost. They had the right read. They had the right play called for it. They were ready for everything. This is interesting. If FaZe is going to keep fighting, they, they've got to know this is the only rifle in the hands of Astralis yet. They still keep a couple bodies there to take this duel. Glaive brought down pretty low, down to 32. 